Can you hear me okay? Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining. I'm Balaji Bhakta, founder and CEO of Ventana Micro. Shortly, I'm going to have my uh, co-founder and our chief architect and our CTO, Greg Favor, also join us on the stage. I think he's getting having a bit of a mic shortage, so he's getting wired with the mic. Just give us a second. They told us we got to be on the stage in order for them to video us properly, so give us a second. Right, while I'm waiting for Greg, let me go ahead and get started. Greg and I have been in the Valley for about 30 some years. Greg, about 37 years to be precise. And over the few decades, we have done high performance x86 class processors. And just prior to founding Ventana, Greg and I founded a company called Veloce. Veloce was the first ever 64-bit ARM processor company in the world. We brought ARM to 64-bit space, and then we also brought them over to the data center space. So that's the team. And if you look at it, Ventana has been recognized as one of the top 10 hot semiconductor companies by CRN two years in a row. They put us in the same league as the likes of Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, et cetera. Not that we are that big, but the impact and the class of products that we create put us in that league. So really delighted to be here with you. The team that we have at Ventana is probably one of the best high-performance server class teams anywhere in the world. And to bring that capability to RISC-V is quite exciting. At the last RISC-V summit in the USA, we announced we're on V1, pretty much bridging the performance gap that existed between ARM, x86, and RISC-V altogether. So RISC-V, for the first time, gets in the same performance league as any other high-performance ISIS. Isn't that exciting? For the first time, yes, yes. It's, it's really a great opportunity for RISC-V to be able to play in the same league as any other high-performance ISIS. So Veron V1 gives you the ability to take RISC-V to applications that have not been available to RISC-V. So that's what is really exciting about Ventana. Look at the single socket performance we are targeting. It's about the same or better than the incumbent ISIS. Why did we do Ventana? I mean, we've done this for x86. We've done that for RISC-V. Why does the world need one more ISA capable of doing high-performance compute? That brings us to this question. There is a dilemma. There is an innovative dilemma that's going on in the semi-space since 15 years. If you roll back and kind of take a zoom out view of what happened within the semi since 2008, you'll realize there's been massive consolidation. Choices have become fewer and fewer. You pretty much have a monopoly in each one of the market segments dominating the space, dictating what the products look like, product roadmaps look like. No innovation. Before all of this, if you look at it, semis would have a refresh cycle of about a year and a half to two years at the most. Now, because of the massive consolidation, they can just do a product and ride it out for the next three years. What are the OEMs to do? Everybody would be forced to buy the same silicon and use the same software. And how do you differentiate? 
You know, automotive is a huge part of European legacy. If all automotive companies source the same silicon, use the same software, how do you differentiate? How do you innovate? Everybody becomes a me too. How do you overcome that? They have to create their own silicon. And if they have to create their own silicon, it costs $200 million per SOC and three, four years to create them. Pretty tall order. That's where we thought it would be a great opportunity for us to create a RISC-V based ecosystem that allows you to create your own version of CPUs, innovate, and create your own cadence. That's why we created Ventana. Ventana was founded to make high-performance CPUs accessible to every OEM in the form of a chiplet, reducing the overall development timeline to less than a year, to about $25 million, and yet allow them to differentiate. With that, we can convert that dilemma into a huge opportunity. The dilemma was lack of choice. The dilemma was really expensive products. How do you go from there? Excuse me. How do you go from there to something that we can all be very comfortable with? So, this is not a hypothetical scenario I'm talking about. This is a real scenario that we've been faced with from one of the largest OEMs. This scenario, if you can consider this particular scenario, left is where they are. They, they tried to solve this innovator's dilemma by creating their own silicon. It costed them about three years, 200 plus million dollars, almost three and a half years. By the time they got done, their silicon was missing the mark. A lot changes in three and a half years. How do you really get to define a product three, four years in advance and have it be capable of addressing your needs? Very difficult. What if you can break that silicon into building blocks and also have the CPU part of it capable of allowing you to innovate through extensibility? You get best of all worlds. That's exactly what we set out to do in this particular example. On the left, you have a scenario that costs you $200, $300 million, three to four years to produce. That's the game that the NVIDIAs, Broadcoms, all of them would play. But going forward, if you want to innovate, you need to lower the cost of innovation to a $25 million level. That's what Ventana has set out to do. So if you look at it, break it down. Compute made available to you in the form of a chiplet. 16 RISC-V cores performing at very high level, all put together, and then there is this block where you can innovate, which is where you have customers' own domain-specific accelerator capabilities. So that's what we set out to do, and that's what allows you to create a new European semiconductor renaissance. You know, if you look at it, Europe used to have a lot of semis, and in the past 10, 15 years, it's been drying up quite rapidly. Why? Cost of innovation. If you can break it down to a lower level, take advantage of RISC-V's capabilities, innovate yourself, and then bring your own versions of the software and hardware combination to market, you get to restart that cycle that Europe was known for for a long time. That's exactly what we are here to drive. So to talk about this more in details, I'll have Greg. But if you look at it, automotives. Automotives are moving away from embedded architecture to more of a software-defined architecture. What do we mean by that? If you look at it, there are three main building blocks in automotives going forward. As you innovate, you have three main building blocks. As you move from embedded to more of the zonal architecture, you need to have IVI, in-vehicle infotainment. ADAS. Everybody has their own algorithms. They have their own know-how. For them to bring that capability, they need to control the underlying hardware. ADAS is another building block. Third, telemetry. Those are the three main, build main building blocks that allow OEMs to create their own versions of silicon. Otherwise, 
they are all reduced to metal benders. If they get the same silicon, get the same software from Mobileye and Qualcomm, et cetera, all they do is metal bending. If they want to get back to innovating, this is the way to go. So when we build data center cloud solutions that have RAS features, and then add functional safety, security, and then bring in modular concept using UCIE, all of a sudden you have a platform that allows you to create your own version of the silicon and innovate. This is what Ventana is really working on. We, you know, we'll have an opportunity for you to talk about this at a booth across the uh, show floor. But to get into the technical aspects of this, I'm going to ask Greg to join. Come on, Greg. Well, thanks, Valaji. Uh, is Mike? There we go. Thanks, Valaji, and good morning, everyone. So uh, let me talk about uh, some more technical aspects. Uh, first is, I think most people recognize that Moore's Law you know, has traditionally been the path to big gains in performance and power from generation to generation. That's no longer the case. Um, and what really is uh, replaced it is more of a system level version of Moore's Law that's really based on hardware software co-design in conjunction with domain specific acceleration. And this is where RISC-V and its both openness as well as extensibility very much comes into play to help enable all this. The other key thing is chiplets as well. And so that enables uh, a number of very desirable attributes. First, through its composability, you know, a given system designer can sort of right-size what meets his needs for his design in terms of how much compute, what type of compute, memory, what type of I.O., et cetera. The other thing also is traditionally for silicon vendors, Okay. Uh, traditionally, for silicon vendors, uh, there's been a tension between application-specific uh, pieces of silicon and more s a very focused customer-specific things. Uh, and you have to anticipate that years in advance. Whereas now, with chiplets and with RISC-V, you have that modularity, you have uh, that composability, that flexibility to you know, put together a system that meets your needs from a lot of these uh, existing building blocks. Uh, and through that, you can maximize you know, the socket level performance, power, cost, and so on. You also get, just through the much wider uh, uh, range of vendors within the RISC-V ecosystem, uh, uh, helps address supply chain diversification and that uh, resilience compared to other architectures with a limited set of vendors. So uh, in terms of Ventana's offerings, there's both IP offerings for uh, the companies that have uh, a large scale to what they're uh, doing. For a lot of uh, companies, the majority of our customers, uh, the economics uh, make chiplets uh, make a lot more sense. We offer both. Um, in terms of our offering, uh, you know, it's centered around what we call a compute cluster, scalable up to 16 cores with an L1, L2, L3 cache hierarchy within that cluster, a coherent fabric to tie it all together. Optionally, we also have a full die-to-die uh, -die, uh, solution. So uh, in a chiplet form of what we do, uh, we incorporate half that data on our side. We give the other half to our customers to go on to their IO hub or SOC. And uh, this shows an example of some of the scalability. Uh, this is more of a server-oriented example, where you want to scale from more of a lower-end entry-level server all the way up to a high-end, very high core count uh, server. Go ahead. One of the key things to enable chiplets is a very good die-to-die -die solution, both at a physical layer and at a controller layer. At a physical layer, traditionally, you had certis-based solutions, high power, high latency, large area and complexity. On top of that, you generally had relatively thick uh, protocols running on top of those. It all adds up to latency, power, everything else. Once it, you're inside a package disaggregating uh, that monolithic chip into multiple die, it's a very different electrical environment that opens the door to instead shifting to using parallel die-to-die -die interconnects, such as the ODSA BOW standard and UCIE. Can you go back one short sec? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We don't have time. Okay. Um, I guess we'll move on. Uh, well, one last just quick mention on die-to-die. -die. Uh, we've done a, a major focus on a very low latency to make that transparent so that you have what, for the most part, looks like a system that really is monolithic, which is very uh, little power, latency, et cetera, overheads of actually disaggregating and doing die-to-die. -die. Go ahead. And so, um, traditionally today, uh, the automotive architecture is based on a domain architecture. Uh, where you have these relatively separate uh, domains, very much microcontroller based, uh, implies a, a lot of uh, rigidity to, uh, uh, to the software environment and how you upgrade various components. It implies like major wiring harnesses, all uh, sorts of things. People are shifting now, in a, uh, it's a big architectural shift to what's called a zonal architecture. 
Uh, with that, uh, that leads to a more centralized form of high performance compute. Certainly the need for uh, uh, compute is going way up to where you're really talking about not one but multiple servers on wheels in essence. You also very much want to get to a unified software environment which is enabled by the zonal architecture and as well as something that can scale so that you know, a, a, a car company can have a platform that can scale from low-end cars up to high-end cars. And this is an example of an automotive oriented uh, uh, system design where you know, based on uh, a hub that uh, uh, it includes a lot of automotive specific IOs, et cetera, as well as DDR, you know, an automotive grade interconnect and so on, to which you can then attach uh, various chiplets, Vintana compute chiplets, uh, IO expansion chiplets, uh, GPU AI accelerator chiplets. And again, that gives you a modularity and scalability from you know, sort of your low end to your high end uh, things within you know, a, uh, a f um, family of cars. So now let me talk just for a moment about um, uh, RISC-V, uh, you know, Ventana within RISC-V. Uh, first is we've already talked about the performance leadership uh, uh, in terms of bringing high performance to the RISC-V community. The second thing is that the, the power of an open source community is uh, through all of its members and all of them contributing. And we certainly uh, have worked to try to uh, contribute in uh, many ways within uh, the RISC-V International Organization as well as within the community. You can see, for example, uh, my and a no myself and a number of other people within the company have been involved with uh, various of the committees and task groups within RISC-V. Uh, and lastly, uh, just as important as the uh, architecture and the hardware ecosystem is also the software ecosystem. Today, a lot of the software ecosystem is there up and running. Uh, but at the same time, there's more work to be done to both uh, mature the ecosystem as well as to optimize the ecosystem. And that's what motivated the creation of uh, this new organization, RISE, RISC-V Software Ecosystem. That's what the acronym stands for. Yeah? All right, okay. so that's Ventana in short. So in closing, you know, RISC-V plus chiplets mm -hmm. and open standards are the way forward for us to generate the next architectural innovation. Ventana leads the market with our first generation products and we continue to have the second generation. I'm happy to say the second generation is already up and running and we'll make some announcements shortly which will tell you how once you invest in our first generation, you're gonna continue to be able to ride on that same software ecosystem. And third, as you look at EU and European markets in general, automotive, data center where you have to care about data sovereignty, end user privacy and security and so forth, owning your own data center is something that's essential. So the entire modern economy is built on semis. You need to have your own semi solutions. RISC-V, Chiplet, Ventana, that combination can help EU in general and, and globally everywhere for you to create your own solutions and be able to you know, defend, uh, create a defendable go forward strategy for your respective industries. So that's the Ventana story. We are here on the uh, show floor. We have a booth just across the floor. Please come by and see us. And thank you for the opportunity. And it's great to be here and great to be part of this great RISC-V community. Thank you. Break. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, we have the coffee break now. There's the um, demo sessions over there. Please attend them. Have your coffee, attend the booth. Did I miss something? No. See you later.